Hey, everybody, what's going on? Um, by the way, it's a new year, just in case you have not been uh, taking a look at your calendars. Uh, so happy to have you back. Our first year starting in May for 2022 was incredible. Uh, we grew, we went to lots of different countries around the world, and I'll be sharing as we continue to grow um, exactly where it is that we continue to engage in terms of these conversations on leadership. My name is Andre. I'm both host and founder of BSTL. What does it stand for? Building something that lasts. Okay, so that's enough about me. I'm extremely um, excited uh, today, and you're going to hear why. Um, I have a friend of mine, one of my closest friends on the entire planet. Uh, we've been friends now for uh, 35 years, like good years, not like friendships where you argue and then all of a sudden you become friends again. We have been friends uh, for 35 straight years, and I'm so glad uh, to have Stephen Alaric. Um, he's on uh, with us. Steve, just go ahead and introduce yourself to uh, the BSTL community. Well, I don't know, man. I'm blushing too much and smiling <laughs> from that from that intro. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it now by like you know <laughs> talking about myself. Yeah. Um, now, nah, um, thank you for that awesome intro. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. um, I've been lucky enough to be on stage, on screen, on TV, and to continue to work. So um, I guess that's kind of the perspective that we're going to end up approaching this from. Yeah. Um, and look, you can play it down if you want to, um, but I'm going to say this out loud. It's not even that Steve is just an actor, like he's a really good actor. And at some point in this conversation, it may come up in terms of some of the films and the things that you've done. Um, and if it does, great. If not, I'm sure that people are going to go and check out Stephen Alaric. You just need to Google it. He's like right there. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to say that I'm his friend and his family. By extension, our families are closely connected, 35 years and counting. So may the Lord continue to bless you, Steve. So here's. I mean, the thing. I, thank you. I, I I don't know why I don't know why you keep aging us by saying 35 <laughs> years. <laughs> I'm a, as far as I'm concerned, I'm only 28, so well, I don't you know how that. Whatever you want to, but here's the thing: <laughs> even if we've been friends for 35 years, all it means is that when we became friends, I might have been like graduating from university when you were just going into high school. There, <laughs> that fixes it. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll take it. As far as anybody knows, that's what that's what the, that's what the deal is. Yeah, I'm the big kid. <laughs> that was hanging out with the kids at the high school. There it is. It's fixed. <laughs> so, Steve, um, here at BSTL, um, one of the things that we talk about all the time is leadership. And uh, even before we hit the record button uh, to have our conversation today, you know, one of the things that this planet is, is, is missing uh, tremendously, I think you might agree, is leadership. And of course, this is season two of um, the BSTL podcast. And of course, we're on Instagram. Uh, we're on LinkedIn. RSS is where we host it all. And so the reality is we play it also through Apple, uh, through Spotify and a couple of other places. Um, but the reality is for season two, we're going to be like zeroing in on what it really takes to be a leader, right? Um, and, and people think it's easy, right? It's not as simple as just going to school, getting a degree, and then you graduate. Because there are times where people don't have formal education, and they do well. And then there are people that do have formal education, and they thrive. So the reality yeah. is, it's it, in part, it's doing what you are called to do. And of course, we are, we are men of faith, and we do believe that God has a lot to do with how well people do as long as they are positioned where he would like them to be, I think. That's an understood between the two of us. So yeah. maybe I want to start here, Steve. Um, difficult decisions. Um, I mean, you, uh -huh. you chased your dream, right? And part of chasing that dream is moving from the city of Toronto and, and locating to California. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like in terms of making difficult dis uh, decisions. Well, you know, What's been ringing true for me the last little while has, has been, you know, courage altogether. And so when you bring up, you know, making dif difficult decisions, I think about that. I think about the courage it takes to, to take those leaps. But, you know, um, I, I'd gotten into motivation 
a lot uh, when I first moved out here. Mm-hmm. And one of the principles that I kind of picked up was, you know, um, taking taking the smaller steps mm-hmm. and not thinking about the whole outcome, but really, you know, it, embracing the process, mm-hmm. which, you know, what, what that means for people, that can mean many different things. Yeah. But in terms of actually, you know, um, you know, moving out here, you know, I, I, first off, I was lucky enough to move with a job, but, um, but you know, you don't, you don't think like, you don't, you don't tackle everything at once. You just tackle bit by bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, 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 um, parallel, I guess, is like when you go to the gym, Mm -hmm. man, I I go regularly, but I I don't want to go (laughs) every day. It's, it's actually, You know, and those days that are harder, I don't think, oh my God, I got to go to the gym. I think, all right, just put on my shoes. I'm just going to put on my shoes. Right. And, and, and then once my shoes are on, I go, you know what? I'm just going to go outside the door. Right. That's it. That's, that's as far as my commitment goes because that's the amount that I'm able to bite off at that time. I think it's a principle to live by. It's, you know, um, I think when people look at what I do, um, it looks when people do it well, it looks very easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody, everybody can watch a scene where, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Christian Bale is tearing himself apart and he's in tears or what have you. It's easy to watch somebody do that and think, well, I cried last week over, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. over whatever situation I was in. I can do that on, on set. But the truth of the matter is, is that it takes a lot more than that. And, and you really have to enjoy the process and enjoy the little steps. And you really have to kind of, you know, uh, uh, dedicate yourself to that. And I think those, that's how, you know, to t- t- take it back to what you're talking about, about difficult, uh, making difficult decisions. Yeah. That's kind of where it comes from is, you know, you, you take the wind out of the sails of the difficulty by doing the small stuff. And before you know it, you get there. Yeah. And, you know, thanks for saying that, Steve, because I think that, and I believe that there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to go and check you out that don't already know about you. And maybe there are people that know that it's you, but they haven't put the name to the face yet. I like the the reality that what you're saying is, look, I'm not trying to eat the entire sandwich on one bite. What I'm doing is I'm right. taking bite-sized pieces out of something that I have to do, whether I want to or not, but I'm just going to take my time so that I make sure that I don't come out the gate too quickly, but I come out fast enough that creates this level of momentum to ensure that I actually get to to the end. And you know what's interesting, as I'm listening to you, Steve, I'm also hearing you say that there there is a certain level of self-discipline that may not necessarily be, be motivated by somebody else, right? So, I mean, everybody's talking about coaches and and, and mentors, and all of those things are are important. But you still got to get up out of your bed. You still got to take that shower. You got to get that gym bag, or you got to get that script and read it. And you ultimately have to to memorize it, right? A hundred percent, man. You know, one of the I read a book that changed me in a lot of ways, which is um, the Success Principles by Jack. Canfield, right? Um, so this book, one of the, it, it gives a, a ton of principles. And, you know, um, it, the, the first principle was you have to take responsibility for yourself. So if you have a coach, that's helpful. That's great. But the coach, like you said, can't pick you out of bed. Yeah. It can't, the coach can't make you do the things that you need to do like what separates the 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 kind of lowest rung basketball player from michael jordan yeah you know they both of them have coaches you know what i mean yeah so so you're right there does have to be self and i think the word you said was discipline which i think is the right word because discipline means you do it even when you're not motivated to and it's hard in a in a it's harder to see that in a career like mine or in in a job like mine where you know, you don't always get the opportunity to act. Right. Someone, right. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if, if you're, if you're a basketball player, you can, yes, it's beneficial to, 
to have somebody there against you, but you can go to the court by yourself and shoot. Sure. You know, you can you can practice foul shots. You can do all kinds. You can practice dribble. You can do all kinds of stuff. Right. And honestly, what I do, there's no difference. It's just harder to see and it's harder to do. I pick up one of the things I like to do is I'll pick an actor that I like. Yeah. And I will before I'll pick a movie that I haven't seen yet. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll read the script. Mm. And then I'll go through the script and I'll make choices and I'll see if I can pick out scene and how I would play the scene and where I would come from with it. And then I could compare it to what they do. So I kind of reverse engineer Uh. what they do. Now, no matter what I do, it's going to be different than them. You know, no matter what I do, my choice is going to be different. But what, what I am able to pick out is, you know, why they make certain choices that they make and then use that principle in what I try to do. So please explain this thing, uh, reverse engineering. Not only does it sound smart, but I have a feeling it's a very big principle. Talk a little bit more about that, right? Because there's a leader that's out there that's like, I love the way that so-and-so leads, right? But they don't have a script per se, right? So even though we're talking about acting, we're, we're trying to transfer um, these skills over into some other areas. So when you talk about reverse engineering and and modeling and imitating, what does that, what does that, how does that all come together? The first thing to me is realizing that like what you see on the outset is built up of a whole lot of stuff you don't see. You know, my dad used to always compare it to, to, uh, to an iceberg. Mm-hmm. And I think lots of people do that where, you know, what you see above the water looks huge. And then when you look under the water, there's like 20 times that right. underneath. Yeah. And yeah. all of that underneath is equivalent to the work that, that gets put in yeah. for the part that you actually do see. Yeah. So to me, the thing to do is to look at what somebody's, you know, take the outset and then try and figure out what could have led up to that. Now you're right. For me, in a sense, it's easier because I have a, I could have a script that I could look at and go, okay, well, I understand, you know, what here, you know, the writer put that you don't actually get to see, you know, spelled out for you on screen. And, you know, but there's also challenges in that, like, you don't know what a director has brought or what, uh, you know, uh, any other person on the team has brought to that person's performance. Yeah. So it is kind of a guess in a way. It's it's an educated guess, but it is in 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 reverse engineering. The first step to me is to to see what what's there and then break. Try your best to break down what what components made that up. Yeah, and I like the way that you put it. But maybe for context sake, and I'm cheating a little bit, right? Because I've got a few yeah. years with you on this journey. Um, right. I, I also think about the amount of work. Um, that you have put into yourself for a long time, right? So uh, what our listeners will come to know, if that's all right, is that, you know, this journey starts with an idea, but it also gets fostered in the same high school that we go to. So while I'm playing football and rugby and you did some of those other things, you're also with a guy um, who I think it's safe to say he was like really instrumental um, in your life, Mr. Lawler. Uh, that guy is the one that would have really poured into this desire and this passion. And while everybody else is going to school and the bell rings at 3.30 p.m. and people are going home or to the various uh, things that they may do in life, you're stuck with about seven or eight people, male and female, um, and you're having these these learning moments and you're learning about how to get into role playing and so on and so forth. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, you mean, well, share about Mr. Lawler, share about the experience, or share about how I get into a role? All of it, right? Because we're still talking about leadership here, right? And you have somehow learned how to lead yourself at this stage of life, but you were on this journey with other people when we were like 14 and 15 and 16 and 17, before you even got to Ryerson, like there's this entire community of other actors and screenwriters and people that deal with the audio visual, like that would have been part of your world. And that's also part of, of how you grow to this. So I know it's going to sound corny, (laughs) but it, 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 it starts, it started, it started with love. Okay. And I'll tell you, I'll tell, 
I'll tell you how uh, how that ties in. When I was twelve, yeah, and I would watch, you know, I don't know, Entertainment Tonight, yes. and I'd see <laughs> I'd see all the money and cars and girls that these guys got. I said, well, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then, but then, uh-huh. when we we're in high school. I got in a play called By Any Means Necessary, yes. and it was the first time our school, which is not, which was not an art school, right. uh, you know, went as far as it did in the Sears Drama Festival, yeah. um, and, um, which was, which was for people who don't know, which was you know this this uh, province wide um, art festival. I mean, it's not a, they say it's not a competition, but they pick certain plays to go forward and stuff, right. and and there are different tiers, and you know, so it was the furthest that our school had ever been before. Um, but I will never forget that one of the other cast members members came backstage and said, you know, uh, this woman would just stop me and said, you know, I saw your play and, and, uh, you know, I didn't know that's how it was for people of color on behalf of half of all white people. I'm sorry, (laughs) (laughs) which, you know, as a teenager, you think, wow, that's pretty, uh, out there, but, but I got the point. And the point was for the first time I saw that the medium could be used to create change uh, and to create positive change. Yeah. And that's when I truly fell in love with it. Uh, and that's, it, it was to fall in love with it means that you, you appreciate the purpose and the purpose means something to you. And so from that moment on, yeah. I, I, you know, my, my, my goals were different. My yeah. wants was different. I fell in love with it. And that means that all the small parts, yeah. the parts that aren't fun, the parts that, you know, it's not fun to, to, to audition. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Audition's not fun. Yeah. It's, it's stressful. It's, you, you know, you, you are essentially doing a job interview every time, yes. every time you do yeah. a new job interview. Yeah. And there's a lot that's not in your hands. So yeah. in a lot of ways, it's not fun, <laughs> but I'm willing to put up with it because the love is greater than anything else. The love for it and the love to express and to reach out and to create change and to find empathy and to, and, and to create or, or foster empathy in others is, is greater than the pain of any other, other stuff that comes with it. You know, every time we have a conversation about you on this journey, um, I learned something new. And so this time in this conversation, um, I, what I've learned so far, at least one of the things that I've learned is the medium for change, right? So in that moment, um, maybe before all of the different rehearsals, it's about remembering the lines and getting into play and all of that other stuff. Um, But this idea that what I'm doing can create the change that really creates the real change, right? And, And of course you touched on it and it's nuanced a little bit, right? Because we're talking about maybe racism, the way that we see men, the way that we see men that come from a Jamaican Chinese background. I mean, that is all of what you walk into each room with. So maybe you can also explain this because you are, uh, the word doesn't come to me. I'll think about it while you're responding. Um, but you have a very unique background, right? Like I don't know a lot of people from Jamaica, uh, with, with the, the mixed heritage of Chinese Jamaican, that is doing what it is that you're doing and yet you're doing it, which means it can be done. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah, actually, um, before I do that, let me go back though to something that you were talking about before, which was, you know, um, as we talk about leadership and I think about, you know, the thing that really kind of fundamentally changed my point of view on what I do, um, that, I think when it comes to leadership, it's important. Messaging is important. Clear, yeah. concise, and yeah. simple and heartfelt messaging yeah. is important when it comes to leadership. You can't lead people without telling them, you know, where we're going. Uh, <laughs> you can't, you know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. can't, you, and, and, and you can't get people to buy into going there yeah. if the message is meaningless. Yeah. The message has to mean something in order to get others to follow you yeah. and go somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I touched on that. But um, in terms of like being different, yeah. you know, uh, look, man, every cloud has a silver lining. Every <laughs> negative has a positive. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's to be honest with you, I, I struggled for a long time when I first moved here. Okay. And I couldn't understand why I came off high off of the Lion King. Yes. I guess that's my first 
that's my first plug. Yes, <laughs> I was yeah. Simba the Lion King. That's right. I did it in Toronto. Yeah. I, I, I did it in Toronto for two years, and then I went to Broadway for six months, and then I came out here for six months. And yeah. and what's odd is, even from back then, I've always I've always felt different. I've mm-hmm. always been different. Yeah. And I've always sat in a place where I've felt like I've never fully belonged. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's yeah. what happens with, with, with race. And it took me a long time to embrace it. I was forced to embrace it with Lion King. I walked in there a quote unquote non singer. You and I know that like I would sing, yeah. but I never sang in front of an audience like Doesn't that. Matter, and... Your voice was butter, man. Is butter, not was. Is butter. <laughs> so I'm not gonna let you come on this podcast and play it down like your voice ain't sick. Look, <laughs> whatever. Well, I was just trying to keep up with you, man. But in any case, if I don't know if your listeners know <laughs> No, <laughs> your listeners don't know about intimate vibe. No, they don't know about all of that when we're sitting on the window. It's winter, and because I'm like so nervous, my body's emit- emitting all this heat, so it's frosting up behind us. We got the Korg X3. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it all, Which man. I still own. Yeah, yeah. I still, I have still mine too. own the Korg X3. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's dig. <laughs> we got to digress and go back. So <laughs> yes. when you walk into um, these rooms and, and you're different, right? And, and maybe you can speak a little bit about that because there's not a lot of Steves out there. I mean, there are a lot of Steves, but in Hollywood, I imagine there's not a lot of Steves. I'm, your cultural background, Canada, Jamaican, yeah. male, um, you know, the different experiences, like they're all uniquely yours, right? So how do, how do these differences that you identify, and we're still talking about leadership, how do they yeah. help you to continue to push forward and do what you got to do? Um, well, because I embrace them, mm-hmm. I know, like you said, each individual is different, you know, you know, um, and what I bring because of my diverse cultural background, yeah. what I bring to a role or to what I do or to storytelling in general, yeah. uh, I know is unique but universal okay. because we, we have a share. So, so I, I, I embrace that. If we're talking about, you know, if we, to tie it back to, to leadership, yeah. you know, it, it's about knowing like, look, I know what's in my control and I know what's not. Yes. What's in my control is I can take some from my side, my audition side, which is the part of the script that they give you to audition with. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. I can take my side. I can work on them. I can uh, find what's unique in it to me, what, what resonates with me. And I can present that on an audition. Right. Um, what's out of my control is whether it fits or even comes down to whether I'm too tall or too short, right. whether I'm too fit or not fit enough. Right. You know, that stuff I, I, I can't help. Right. But what I can help is what I take into control, you know? Um, and so it, it's really just about embracing that. It's embracing the knowledge that, you know, there is an audience for me. Yes. There is, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, embracing yeah. that and, yeah. and accepting the no's, you know, yeah. like it's not any different, you know, the auditioning process, not any different, man, than, than if you're a business looking for money, you, you go to, you, you have to, you end up collecting a certain amount of no's before right. those yeses, but you got to know that the yes is coming. You have to have faith that like, you know, a, a yes is out there. I just got to kind of knock enough times to, to, to get those no's out of the way. And you know what? That's Steve? how I. That's how I embrace what what makes me different. Is is you know uh, I'm going to be unique if I embrace those things, and unique is a good thing. Yeah. So you know what's yeah. interesting, Steve, and I like the way that you say this thing. Look, I know that you're talented, and there is not a part that you could not play. But on some level, that is outside of your control. But one of the things I've always appreciated about you is you've always been like, look, they didn't select me for this. They went in a different direction, but there's going to be another space and place that I'm perfect for that. And I think that that's one of the missing ingredients, especially for younger leaders, I think, Um, because, you know, nobody likes to be rejected. Nobody likes to feel like, oh, I'm not suited for that particular thing. But at the end of the day, you may miss a hundred roles, a hundred different leadership um, opportunities. And all of that is fine and dandy because the one that you actually get chosen for, 
you know, it doesn't remove the rejection of the past, but it certainly helps you to understand that, hey, maybe those other hundred opportunities, I didn't get them because this thing is for me. And because I'm clear on the impact, the change, um, what I would like the world to understand through my eyes and through my art, this is why I get this one. Yeah, man. I mean, look, the balance between, here's what, I feel like any failure, there's a number of things to learn from. There's, mm-hmm. there's knowing what you could improve on. There's knowing what is in your control. There's knowing what's out of your control and how to let go of that. Uh, I don't think there's a difference in whatever, you know, uh, industry you're in. I don't, I don't think there's a difference with that. I think part of leadership to, again, I know, I, you know, I struggle a little bit to, 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 to bring it back to leadership because I want to just keep talking. <laughs> and it's fine. I'm not going to be, wait, 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 there's a point to this. <laughs> but, no, it's good. <laughs> But um, but to bring it back to what we're talking about, where this all came from, which is leadership. Yeah. I mean that that is a part of it. Yeah. Is acceptance, accepting, you know, where you are, yeah. accepting where you can go, yeah. understanding what needs to change in order to get there, and having the courage to make those changes and to take action. Yeah. So you know, those those are all things I feel that are can be scary and, and tough to do, but that's what makes in my mind, you know, uh, success that that's what makes a, a good leader. You're right. Uh, you know, in a sense, I, I'm a leader of my own self of my own, you know, uh, a career, yeah. but, uh, you know, I do have a team. I have a manager. I have an agent. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have partners that yeah. I work with to create projects and yeah. stuff like that. And, and it, it, it's really, you know, uh, it, it really is about doing what you can with what you have, but, but that requires a lot of understanding, a lot of faith, a lot of trust. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I, I think it's really, really important to have that. So, all right. So here's the thing, right? Cause I, I yeah. <laughs> believe it or not, we're at like minute 27. Uh, and I know you're going to oh, be back. My God. I, I know you're going to be back, but here's what I want to say though. This creating the change, right? Because people also want to know, like, how do I enter the room as a leader? Uh, And and I can see what I can do, but I've got to find a way to translate this into a world that embraces me through collaboration, uh, friendships, partnerships, accountability people, you name it. So here's, like, the last question, and you could take as long as you'd like to, uh, to unpack this, but... I want to know how did you develop the type of courage to create the change that I'm beginning to see, right? So again, I'm cheating because I've got, I've, I've had the opportunity and I've been blessed enough to watch you for 35 years chip away at this thing. And in my opinion, you are in the season that we saw in you way back in grade 10 or 11, whenever it was that the play happened. So how do we create this change then, Steve, ultimately? Belief. I know, I know it sounds simple and it sounds, again, I may, might sound corny, but it's love, it is love and belief. Yeah. Like, you know, that is fundamental. Um, you know, if you're asking me steps, you know, it all stems from that. I guess that's why I say it that way. I, I break it down to love and belief because that's, that's the basis. But yeah. in terms of, you know, how to create that. It is, it's all those things that we spoke about, man. Mm. It's, it's, it's all, it's about, you know, trusting who you are, embracing your differences. It's about, um, you know, not doing like finding the balance of, of not doing for others. Mm. You, it, it, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'm making sense oh, when I say that, but, but Keep going. the focus, mm-hmm. the focus can't be on pleasing everybody else. Mm. If, if, for instance, if I walk into an audition, right. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm going to guess what they want from me. You mm-hmm. can't guess. Mm-hmm. And you can't also be true right. because you're not stemming from yourself. You're right. stemming from them. Yeah. There has to be a certain amount of balance. Now, look, when we make film, we make it for an audience. We yeah. cannot, a, a film or a TV or any of that stuff cannot exist right. without the audience. The Correct. audience is the most important part. Correct. So, so there is a level of, yeah. of, 
doing it for others, but it can't be based in that. It's got to be based in your own heart and belief. Love. So as an example, you yeah, know, the, the short film that I made. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's okay. There's a little delay, so I don't always get to, you know, I, I hear you. Um, I'm, But I made a short film mm -hmm. that is so incredibly meaningful for me. Mm -hmm. And there's many reasons why it's meaningful. One is that the chances of this doing anything for my career is next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And that you know that going in. People's right. careers don't typically, yeah. typically change off of, uh, you know, a short film. So why I bring that up is to say that me, everybody who was involved with this entered knowing that, right. which means we're, we're already entering it from a place of love. Mm -hmm. The message for this, this was a movie about a little mixed race boy mm -hmm. who's infatuated with Batman and he has a racial awakening when he realizes he doesn't look like Batman. Mm -hmm. Everybody got on board with that message. Mm. And I, I, and I'm very proud of what we created because yes. there was no ego in that. Right. We're talking about leadership. Yeah. The funny thing is in my mind, you know, when you hear leader, you think someone who, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it forces their view. Right. You know what I mean? I yeah. think that's sort of a general, and I think the, the exact opposite is what a successful leader is. Yeah. It's someone who listens, yeah. someone who allows everybody else to, to shine, to use their talent. Yeah. If I put a team together, I, I don't want to micromanage. Right. I want to be able to say, you know what? I'm not good at, but you are. Yes. So why don't I let you take control of that? Yeah. And I'll, but we all have to do it along a message. Yeah. And so it feels as though with my short film, yeah. that that's what, that's why it was successful in my mind because we were able to, you know, uh, convey a very simple and straightforward message and everybody who came on board was on with that message. Right. You know, even, even I have a Batman costume in it that is incredible that would have cost four or five times the amount that I actually paid for it mm -hmm. because when I went to the guy who makes these costumes, oh, wow. I told him what we we're doing and he was like, I'm on board with that message. I'll do it for cost. Wow. It was incredible. Wow. The amount of people that came together and how ego fell apart and we were all, that many people were able to get on board and go in the same direction wow. because the message was clear and everybody was allowed to buy into the message yeah. and everybody was allowed to use their talents to improve the overall thing. Wow. So here's the thing, Steve. Um, and you do have to tell us how we can see this, this um, film that you created. I'm sure that it's masterful, but I'm also hearing you say courage, faith, and clarity. As a leader, you've got to have at least those three things. Um, because people, you know, the world is changing. Once upon a time, you could say, I'm the leader and people will follow. But now I think that the world is changing and that you've got to give me a reason to follow you or else you may be the only one that's marching down that street. Steve, please, you get the final word and tell us how we can get to this film because uh, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to want to see it as well. So please, if you can help me to do that before we say uh, goodbye. Well, from this here's podcast. what I'm going to... Here's what's going to have to happen because we we're in the festival circuit right now okay. with it. So um, blessed to be, we we were in the Berlin Short Film Festival and the Austin Short uh, Austin Film Festival, both of which are really actually prestigious um, festivals. So to get into them, uh, I'm I'm extremely proud of. We've been extremely selective about what we've submitted to. So uh, we're waiting to hear from three more. So nice. until those until those come through yeah. one way or the other, um, we probably will not. It, it's not viewable yet. Okay, all right. But once that happens, I will make sure to let you know. No, not just me. Um, you got to come back on because then we have to have yeah, a second I'll, I'll conversation. Say, man, I'll be, all right, I'll be glad to come back on. But uh, in the meantime, yeah. um, if I am going to plug shamelessly, then yeah, I'll have please. people. Go ahead. <laughs> I have. I'll ask people to watch um, uh, Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins, Snake yeah, Eyes. Yeah. Um, that that film, um, uh, you know, uh, I was really I was really proud to be a part of that. Oh, you were incredible, man! You were incredible on that thing. Uh, 
Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm on TV and stuff all the time. I'll keep you guys posted, but, thank um, you. But you know, check check those out. And um, man, I, I thank you so much for having me on. I, I will be Steve, glad to be back if you'll have me back, or if oh, people absolutely. are willing to hear me ramble on for another no, half hour. Not rambling at all. I promise you, this has been a great conversation, and I am certain that uh, those that listen to this podcast are going to be tremendously blessed. You know, one of the things I've always loved about you is despite the gifts and the abilities that you have, and and I'm not buttering you up, like we're friends, so I could say whatever, and it would all be true because we know each other very, very well. Um, But I'm so grateful, and and I think that this is a testament to your parents. I I, I knew your dad, and I know your mom. Uh, They've raised an incredible human being who has changed uh, the world everywhere that he is just by his presence. Uh, so, Steve, it's not just about coming on for this conversation. It's it's about the world getting to know the unscripted side of you. Um, and I'm certain that they're going to be blessed to, to, to hear you and hear the amount of humility that you have. I mean, you've traveled all over the place doing this thing and just pausing, you know, to take a few minutes out of your day to have this conversation. I just want to say thank you. And look, for those of you that have um, tuned in, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to have a broader conversation. Don't forget to email me at bstlinc21 at gmail.com. Stephen Alaric, thank you so much for joining us. And to those of you uh, on the second thank you, man. week in 2023, uh, thank you for joining us. And we're going to be having the hard conversations around self Um, this um, season two. And when we talk about self, not just you, but part of it is what do you have to become to become the leader that people want to follow, the leader that is going to create the change that creates the change based on the vision. All of that is going to be a part of uh, season number two. And so thanks Steve for helping us to kick off the year. Right. And we're going to continue. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be part of it. Thanks Steve. All right, everybody, have a good day. Thanks for joining us. And what, uh, 7 o'clock Monday, every single Monday, join us. I think that you're going to be blessed. Take care for now. Bye.